Well, welcome to the Best Way program. We're really excited that you're able to join us for this journey. It's a 10-week journey. It meets Tuesday night at 7 p.m. online on Zoom. The link you can find at southbaysda.org and you go up to the top of the web page and you can choose the little tab called Best Way. There it will have your Zoom link, it will have your online scorecard and your program materials and other really important links that you want to have there. Now at this time, Dr. Nelson will introduce our presenter for this evening. My name is Dr. Eric Nelson, as you see on the screen there. And I am the Health Ministries Coordinator for the South Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Normally, when we do a Best Way program, it is actually in a physical facility, and we would all be together in one room interacting, and we'd hand you pieces of paper that we would take notes on. We would hand you cards to fill out. We would uh, be watching a PowerPoint presentation together and be face-to-face -face around a small table. Obviously, that's different this year, and um, that's bad. I wish we were in person, but it's good because this program is by far and away the largest best way program that I have ever been part of. Um, I don't know how many people will end up getting onto our program tonight. I know a lot of times when people sign up on Facebook, sometimes they um, aren't able to make it or they have technical difficulties. But um, the last best way program, I think we only had 40 people or so and we had well over three times that register for this program anyway. We'll see how many are able to uh, make it here this evening. So I'm very excited about this program. We have individuals from, I think I counted about seven different states in the United States and four different countries around the world as part of this program. So if you're watching from Bermuda or South Africa or the Middle East uh, in an unnamed country, welcome, we're glad you're here. Um, we will be introducing some of our other presenters a little bit later on. Let me tell you just a little bit about how this program is going to work. As you know, it's online only. It's via Zoom. All of you just learned how to use Zoom from our illustrious Best Way coordinator, Lucas Johnson. Um, it's 10 weeks long. So it's every Tuesday night uh, from about 7 o'clock to a little after 8 o'clock. Tonight will probably go a little bit long, but a little bit after 8 o'clock. It's about an hour, hour, 15 minutes in length. Um, now, for those of you who actually live in the North Georgia, um, Southeast Tennessee, Chattanooga area, there is actually potential for getting together for some socially distanced outdoor activities, some exercise. Dr. Nita Hillman will be telling you about that a little bit later on. And there's also potential for an outdoor socially distanced graduation at the end. So we can get together a little bit. And we'll again, we'll tell you a little bit about that later on. Um, at this point, I am going to have an opening prayer. And after that, I will, without further ado, introduce two individuals. Let's all bow our heads for prayer. Dear God, we're just so thankful for this opportunity to be together virtually. I'm thankful for the technology which allows us to uh, be in touch with people even around the world. I'm thankful for each person here who has a dedication to improving their health. Help each one of us to live life to the fullest, to be able to uh, have our bodies be living temples for your service. Uh, ask that through this program, uh, you will be um, encouraged and blessed by, uh, and we will be encouraged and blessed by the group interaction and seeing changes in ourselves and seeing changes in others. We pray these things in your name. Amen. At this point, I'd like to introduce two people. Normally, I would be introducing just one person, and that's our presenter, but I do want to, um, I do want to uh, spotlight a, a someone here, and that's Dr. Elvin Adams. Dr. Elvin Adams is the, uh, the physician who has actually, um, uh, what's the word for it, who has actually um, created the Best Way program, and so we're very thankful that he's actually able to be here with us for this program, even though he's one of those individuals who is definitely not living in the Chattanooga area. So welcome, Dr. Adams. Uh, those of you who are lucky enough to be in group number 16 will get to interact with him um, uh, more later on this evening. Great uh, to you. Uh, the person I'd like to introduce as our presenter for this evening 
using the materials that Dr. Adams has uh, developed and created uh, is Dr. Nita Abraham. Now, Dr. I'm sorry, Dr. Nita Hillman. When I knew her in medical school, class of 2006, a long time ago, um, I knew her as Dr. Nita Abraham, but she's now Dr. Nita Hillman. And she is an incredibly vivacious person who is incredibly dedicated to lifestyle medicine. Lifestyle medicine is an entirely new specialty of medicine, which is dedicated to helping individuals improve their health through lifestyle. And that's what this program is about. So we're very thankful that Dr. Nita Hillman is here to uh, give our first presentation. And our first presentation is entitled uh, Best Way Basics. This first presentation is going to lay the foundation for everything that is going to follow the next 10 weeks. And so um, I want to um, have all of you give a very warm welcome, although you're still muted, to Dr. Nita Hillman. Dr. Nita Hillman, if you want to spotlight yourself, your own video, and share your screen, we look forward to your presentation. Um, so actually, for some reason, it is um, not allowing me to share my screen right now. It says um, that I was disabled from doing it. So um, if you don't mind. Well, maybe we need to make you a co-host or something. Lucas, can you make Dr. Nita Hillman a co-host? Thank done. you. Thank you. Um, thank you very I much. Know. No worries. No worries at all. Um, I, as I'm pulling up my presentation, I am um, very grateful to each of you for being here. I know that this is a time commitment that you are making. So I am um, very excited and um, want to make sure your time is used well. Uh, all right. Okay. Are you guys seeing my screen? You're good? All right. Great. Uh, welcome to Best Way. You are about to do um, what I believe is going to be one of the most life-changing experiences that you are going to have and that you have had in a long time. We are definitely going to help you be able to lose some of that weight. Some of us have put on pounds because of COVID. Um, some of us have had pounds that have just actually been coming on over the gradually over the last few years that we want to definitely help you um, uh, Put off. Again, my name is Dr. Nita Hillman. I'm an internal medicine board certified physician. I've been helping patients with lifestyle changes for uh, since 2008 and to do it successfully. And the principles that Dr. Adams have put together is are principles that I hope that you will utilize during these 10 weeks that we have together and that you will, I know, will see success um, as we go through this. One of the things that we want to talk about is why do we even care about weight, right? If it wasn't an issue, we wouldn't talk about it. We wouldn't have these seminars. There wouldn't be all these programs. Um, what I want to highlight, many of us know what we see on the screen. So many diseases that are associated with um, obesity or with even just being overweight, many of these diseases, diseases begin. I'm going to highlight just a few that we don't always think about. You know, if I were to ask you, um, I can decrease your risk of cancer by 30%. What would you pay me to do that, right? What would you have me do for that? Well, here's the thing. You don't have to pay a thing. Show up every week for the next 10 weeks, right? And put some of these principles into place because when we are obese, we, our risk of cancer increases by 30%, right? I've treated patients who have struggled with, um, with un being unable to have children because of polycystic ovarian syndrome. And as they are um, putting lifestyle principles into place and lose weight, they're able to have children again. Two other things that are very near and dear to me are um, lifestyle diseases that are associated with central obesity around weight stored in our middle, um, dementia, um, and dementia and de depression especially so. Um, one of the things though that I, um, I think many of us became very familiar with and sometimes in a very painful way this last year was actually um, COVID-19. Right. I want, you know, the American Heart Association, we're looking at this in November of 2019. If you listen to this, obese patients were more likely to be hospitalized with COVID-19. Okay. And that doesn't seem bad. We know a lot of people who get hospitalized and they make it out fine. Right. But this is the, this is one thing that was so key. If they, especially if they were young, age less than 50, okay, these are not people that we think about go to the hospital and cut and die. They were at higher risk for in hospital death or being put on a ventilator in the hospital, and they were higher risk for having a blood clot and for having dialysis, and this from something that is preventable. And even one thing that I just want to encourage you, this is something that is reversible. And as you reverse these, this risk factor, you can decrease the risk for many of the diseases that we're talking about. 
we um, measure weight in so many different ways. I'm not going to go into all of the different ways, but I'm gonna talk about one factor we do look at, one that is BMI. When we standardize this in our research, we're able to look at a lot of different things um, that, that help us understand what happens as we put on weight. Um, you can Google BMI, Body Mass Index Calculator, plug in your height and weight, and you can get a number. And what these numbers um, will tell you, I just want you to think about um, a couple of things. One. A couple of numbers, okay? If your BMI is over 25, you're considered in the overweight range. And this is where we start to get concerned and disease prevalence increases. If it's above 30, you're in the obese range. If um, it's above 35, then we classify us in the um, severe obesity. And then BMI over 40, that's in the morbid obese range, okay? These again are things that tell us, okay, we really need to be watching out for this. So much so that when COVID hit out, every subspecialty and every major specialty said, we have to do something about this pandemic that is taking over our world. What do they mean by a pandemic taking over our world? Um, we're just going to go through, I wish I could show you all the maps, but I just want to highlight a few. Back in 1990, if we took the states with the highest prevalence of obesity, you would only find one in 10 people that struggled with obesity, roughly around that, that range in the highest states, okay? You fast forward 20 years, and you look at the states with the highest prevalence of obesity, it is at least one in every four people or one and almost every third person struggling with obesity, right? And there was no state, no states that had less than one in five people that were struggling with obesity. That was just in 20 years. Then fast forward another nine years, and we had only, there were only two areas that really had a, a cessation and decreasing and actually decrease in the, in the risk, in the prevalence of obesity. But when we looked at this in general, obesity just kept increasing and has kept on increasing and it, it's not slowing down in its prevalence. It's something we've got to do something about. And by making the choice to be here tonight, you are choosing to do something about this. And we are going to make sure we do everything in our part to be able to help you achieve those goals that you want. We do have an international audience. So I just wanted to share a little bit of data also. And this is from this is looking um, at data that was collected in 2014, published in 2017. When you look at North Africa, when you look at Eastern Europe, Central Europe, Central America, and, and some of the islands, um, one in five people were, when if they died, one in five people that died were dying from a disease that was associated or attributed to obesity, something that could have been prevented and even reversed. Um, there are many ways to be able to treat obesity, okay? We've got tons of diet pills, even over-the-counter ones. We've got surgeries. I've treated patients with the complications that come from surgeries. They're, they're considered not to have complications because it's normal for them to vomit about every once every two weeks or so, and that's just considered the norm, what happens with it. And there are many patients who, after surgery, have learned to eat around their surgery. They, these are not permanent solutions, and they have side effects. There are so many diets out there. Many of you have heard these, right? Paleo, keto, Atkins, ketogenic. I mean, tons of different diets out there. And one of the things that we find is that there are complications to these diets because they are not balanced nutrition in many of these programs. And I have, again, treated even very recently helping patients who have had severe insomnia and anxiety that come because of unbalanced um, nutrition programs. And so what we want to talk about is best way. And we want to show you why best way is so special. What, why, what um, Dr. Adams created, um, why it works. Okay. First thing, best way works. You do it. Give us all and everything for these 10 weeks. Participate, link with us, and it will work. You will learn principles for these 10 weeks, but then over the next few, um, over the next few weeks, you're going to continue to put um, some of these principles into place. And over the next six months or a year, what you'll find is that many of you are going to lose about 20 pounds. Some of you are going to lose 30 pounds. We've even had guests who are participated with a program that have lost over 100 pounds in two years. Yes, it is possible to put these principles, but we encourage you, don't hold back and put these principles into place, okay? Best way is not expensive. We are not going to recommend any supplements. We're not going to recommend powders and shakes and pills and vitamins and this and that. Nothing to buy, okay? No one is going to is going to ask you to be part of their, you know, little program to buy a Tupperware or this or, or blender or whatnot. You don't need it, okay? And um, we're going to provide you individual assistance. We have so many volunteers that are here specifically to walk you through this program time and time again no matter what it is when it comes to chronic disease 
Um, even insurance is paying for people to get into groups and to help fight disease. And we find that it works when you do that. And we'll talk about how to do that a little bit more later. later. Um, best way, also the nutrition is just gradually improving your diet. We're not going to slam you with a whole bunch of things at the very beginning, right? So it, and it's not very complicated to follow. Every week, we're going to give you a little, another principle, another principle, something else to, um, to add. And we're going to give you that big picture here today, okay? The exercise is not complicated. We just want you to walk. That's it. We just want you to walk. And I know some of you have, have emailed us and told us that you've been restricted from being able to walk. We're going to give you some very simple alternatives to that. But for the most part, um, those who are able to walk, walk. And you will find that the weight comes off. And, and next week, Dr. Abraham is going to show you exactly why and how to do that. Um, best way also, this is one thing that is so important. Since 2008, as I've been helping patients, one of the things that I find is that patients Consist, cannot consistently put these principles into practice over time, whatever it is that they choose to do. Um, but when they link up with God, God actually helps them with losing the weight, helps them, empowers them, gives them what they could not do on their own. And they find over and over again how many patients have told me they were able to do things that they didn't feel possible, things that they, that before were impossible, no matter how much accountability that they had. And so we're encouraging you, even if you don't consider yourself a religious person, put some of these principles into place and see what, um, and let God prove himself to you during this time. Um, best way is fun. Did you guys have fun with Lucas at the very beginning of the video? You did, right? I even heard someone say, it's fun. We're going to have fun together. Enjoy your small groups. Enjoy the people that you're working with together. Come walk with us. We're going to be walking um, together on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. over at Heritage Park. And depending on who comes, we will arrange and change that up, um, depending if you know if we want to be have it closer or further. We're going to do that Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Um, and we'll send that out in the emails. And then we're going to walk together again on Thursday mornings at 10.30 a.m. You come and it doesn't matter. Even if you can only sit and walk a few steps, we have it arranged in such a way that you can just sit down and do a little bit of walking and, and walk around in a circle with us. Just come, do it together, get outside, okay? Um, and then you've got our Facebook group also to be able to ask questions. Um, if you need any more information on that, let us know and we'll get that to you. All right, first rule for success, okay? I'm gonna give you, there are some very simple seven rules that you're gonna keep into place. This is the overview, okay? We know that some of these things you're gonna be putting into place slowly, but here are the seven rules, the seven ways you are gonna help put these things into place um, and be successful, okay? Eat, first rule, eat less at each meal. Look at your plate. When you eat your meal, look at your plate and ask yourself, um, can I eat 25% less, just a little bit less than what I did before? maybe 50% less than what I did before. Just eat a little bit less than what you did. I don't want you to count calories. I don't want you to weigh food, measure food, you know, put things into little trays and containers and do all kinds of fancy things. No, just look at your plate and, um, and, um, and, and eat a little bit less. We encourage you to eat three meals a day, um, two to three meals a day. We don't want you to eat more meals than that or less meals than that. Ideally, we're encouraging you to eat three meals a day. Um, and we want you to eat them at regular times. So pick some times, write them down today. I'm gonna to eat at eight, uh, one and five. And um, at whenever that time comes, grab something. It doesn't matter what, you will start to get um, more consistent in eating as you, as you do that. Um, I don't, we also don't want you to skip breakfast. Okay, very important. I'm going to flip. Now what we're gonna do is in the next little bit as you're doing these rule for, rules for success, some of you, um, I'm not sure if you've gotten the link yet for your scorecard. You will, in a link, every single day, get a scorecard. This used to be on paper, but we don't, um, but, you know, in our virtual world right now, it's going to be harder for you to get those um, cards to us, but you will have a Google Doc that you fill every day. Very easy. Pull it up onto your phone, onto your browser, and then fill it out. Or if you have your Google Docs app, fill it there, keep it there for you, and fill it out as you go in the day. You'll put your name, you'll put your first and last name, and then whatever table group you're in. Say I'm on table five. I'll put it there. That way we can make sure that just your um, group leader gets your information and helps coach you personally on what you can do to improve the things that you're doing. So let's look at the meals. What you're going to do is you're going to sit down at breakfast and you're going to say, okay, I today I'm looking at my plate and I compared to what I used to do. Am I eating about 25% less than what I did? Am I eating the same amount? Am I eating 10% more? Um, or am I you know, skipping that meal? Whatever that is, I'm going to give myself a score. 
I'm eating, let's say today I ate about the same as I did do normally for breakfast. Then I'm gonna give myself a score of, um, of two, okay? Simple, done, very easy to do. You'll go to your lunch score, you'll do the same thing. How much am I eating compared on my plate? What does it look like compared to what it used to be before? Then go to, go to your supper score and do the same thing, okay? One thing though, one caveat, the one thing I don't want to see ideally is that anybody puts a six down for breakfast. One of the key principles when it comes to weight loss is that you don't skip breakfast, okay? Make sure that you are eating breakfast regularly every day. Um, so again, first rule for success, eat, eat, eat less at each meal, eat at regular times, okay? Next thing, second rule for success. This is different than what you've maybe heard before, especially if you've done a lot of other weight loss programs. No snacks, okay? Nothing in between the meals. Don't eat before the meal, don't eat after the meal. And what I'm really gonna encourage you to do is when you're feeling hungry and you're like, okay, they said not to eat, let me pop some gum into my mouth or sugarless drink or candy. No, it's actually just gonna stimulate your appetite and have you getting into the habit of eating during that time. And so what I'm encouraging you to do again is to um, make sure that you are um, ideally not um, eating between the meals. Again, drink as much water as you can. Then go to your scorecard at the end of the day and ask yourself, okay, when it came to snacks today, how many snacks did I have? Did I have no snacks today? If I had no snacks, then I'm gonna choose a score of four. If I had um, one snack between lunch and dinner, and then I had another snack between another snack between lunch and dinner, okay, I had two snacks that day, then I'm going to give myself a score of two, okay? So I'll choose that score. Whatever it may be, you put that score in for the day, okay? Now let's look at rule number three, okay? Rule number three, you're going to give up a certain food, okay? How do you pick that food? You're going to do that in your group today, and it's going to be explained in a little bit more um, detail. During these next 10 weeks, pick one food that you're going to give up. And ideally, you're going to pick a food that you're eating every day so that it will make a big difference during these 10 weeks. Choose a food. The foods that will give you the most bang for your buck are foods that are high in fat, foods that are high in calories, okay? Desserts, salad dressings, butters, margarines, cheese, um, you know, whatever it may be. Some people are consuming high amounts of high calorie um, sugar sweetened beverages, maybe that's your thing that you're going to do. But again, the most bang for your buck is usually going to be a food that is high in fat or high in calories. These are what we call the foods to avoid or the FTA. When you go to your scorecard for the day, you're going to ask yourself, okay, today, did I, um, did I actually keep to where I didn't eat the foods that I said for these 10 weeks, I'm not going to do. If I didn't eat it, then I'm going to give myself a score of four for today. If you know what, I had two candy bars today. Ah, oh, okay. Then I'm gonna give myself a score of one because I ate two of them, okay? Um, here is one little thing that you get. Um, if once a week you choose to have one of those foods you said you wanted to avoid, you get a pass, okay? One of the days you can actually count it as, that, as uh, give yourself a full four, no penalty. If one of the days of the week you ate that food that you needed to avoid or that you were saying you were gonna avoid, but otherwise, you will, um, you will want to, um, again, keep away from eating that food. Rule number four, we're going to exercise by walking, okay? That's the ideal. You, if you bicycle already and swim already, that's fine. It, um, no problem, but walking is really the best, and you will be successful in losing that weight by walking. Um, exercising out, outdoors, there's actually good data on the Facebook page. I'll be posting different articles periodically. Exercising outdoors and in the fresh air and sunlight actually will increase and add other factors that will help you lose weight faster. So if you're able to do that, um, do that too. Um, don't get too short of breath. Um, if you haven't been jogging before, don't start jogging now. We really want you to start slow and, and um, start low and start building up very slowly to avoid injury. Okay. Rule number five, pray. Pray to start the day. When you start at the very beginning, asking for the help, I guarantee it will be given to you. Don't miss out on this opportunity. You start the meal you're about to eat and you know that sometimes you don't make as good choices. You're about to go to your meal. Pray before that meal. Ask for divine guidance and some help. When you're walking, pray. Maybe you're thinking about somebody that you, you, you've been worried or concerned about. Use these as opportunities to pray, okay? When you win, you make a good choice. Thank God, he loves to hear your thanks. When you are maybe making a choice that you wished you hadn't, um, pray and thank him for the grace that he gives you and ask him for help the next time. All right. Um, and then, I'm sorry, for your score, um, your walking score, ideally we want you to hit about 
30 minutes um, of walking, this is your goal to get that number four, you can do it. Um, you can do it in two 15 minute times or three 10 minute times for those who are really not very well conditioned, or you can do it as 15 minutes one direction, 15 minutes back. Um, one other thing that I wanted to um, keep in mind is that for those who are not able to exercise um, or not able to walk, I had a patient who lost 35 pounds in three months. Simply all she did was sit in a chair and she brought her knees together and back, knees together and back, knees together and back. That's it. Some have done it. Some who have been paralyzed from the waist down because of diabetes have just been moving their arms during and doing their 30 minutes that way. If you pray at your meal time, each time that you pray, whether it's at meals or not, count each of those times and then mark your scores accordingly. And finally, um, or sorry, your, your sixth rule for success is actually reading your words of encouragement, okay? In, in your, um, even if you don't consider yourself a religious person, in your um, handout and in your workbook, there will be something to read, a Bible reading to do for the day. One of the, the things that we found is a great study that, I, that will be posted on Facebook tomorrow um, is a study done by Rounding that actually talked about the fact that people get tired of making decisions. You're making decisions about your food, decisions about exercising, decisions at work, financial decisions, and you have a very difficult time making those decisions. For people who are having a hard time making decisions by the end of the day, if they were unscrambling a religious phrase, one of the interesting things that they found is that they were able to refuel their ability to make good decisions. This is powerful. God has some incredible words that are there that will give you resource. And simply by taking the opportunity, taking it by faith and reading these words, you will find that you have power to do some things that you otherwise didn't think you would be able to do before. Um, uh, finally, your last and seventh rule for success is stay in contact with your group leader. If you're going to be in a group, you're going to go into your breakout session, you're going to get your email, text, or phone, uh, number from your group leader. You have the opportunity to have accountability for 10 weeks. Take advantage of it. Do not lose this opportunity. We believe in this so much that on your scorecard, and if you call your best way helper, you get three points just for making contact with your best way helper every day. You can text them, you can call them, you can email them. And it is, it is a very powerful and useful tool for you. Um, this is the that's it for this first session that we're looking at seven simple rules to keep in mind they're going to reinforce it in your small group session we're going to learn a few more things in the next week and we are so thankful to you so thankful to you for joining excited and we believe that as you apply these very simple rules you are going to see the benefits um, especially as you keep in contact with us and allow us to help you achieve those goals thank you for taking the best way well, thank you, Dr. Hillman. That was an exceptionally good lecture. I really appreciate uh, Dr. Nita Hillman. Um, I want each one of you to know that she has put in a lot of time into this program. She is the one who came up with the idea of a Facebook site. And she's the one who came up with the idea of, even though it's a pandemic and we're all doing this on Zoom, why don't we get together and do some walking? And yes, thank you, Sherry, for putting up that little heart for uh, Dr. Nita. And um, I know all of you are going to appreciate her even more by the end of this program. Um, Dr. Nita, I just have two questions for you before we, uh, before we go on. Um, the first one has to do with this idea of walking and the Facebook um, uh, site that you mentioned several times. Now, I know that we're going to um, give people a link to the Facebook site, but um, how do you see this Facebook page going? Is everybody able to just kind of join the site? and? Yeah. Uh, tell me, tell me a little bit more about how we're going to use this site, which is completely new for our Best Way program this year. Sure. So there are multiple ways you can use this, utilize the site, especially for those. Um, so, for example, with walking, um, every time that we walk together, so those two times that we walk together, we're going to be live on Facebook. So even if you can't join us in person and you're overseas somewhere, you can come walk with us while we're there for your accountability. I showed up, I walked, I did my thing. So that's one way. The other way is that if you have questions, questions that came up, didn't get answered during the during the week, Dr. Abraham and I are going to Abraham and I are going to alternate every day to make sure every question that is on that Facebook page gets answered. Anyone can join that group. It is a public group, whether they're in the Best Way program or not. Um, we, you know, we we have some guidelines and rules that we ask you to follow. I mean, that are just simple 
um, normal rules that you would in any other site, but but ask questions there. I'm also going to post some some encouragement there and some articles, maybe to questions that people have had, um, because you just want to know a little bit more. And so those are places that you'll find that. Um, talk to each other, encourage. I, you're trying to figure out, they told me to eat beans. How do I eat my beans? Somebody can give you great recipes. I'm sure 100 recipes, you'll probably get 50 to 100 recipes with great ways to make beans. Um, so these are ways to be able to, to just interact with each other and help each other along. Great, well, thank you. Um, one more question uh, from the lecture. There was um, uh, one of your slides um, where you discussed some foods you can kind of eat more of, others you probably shouldn't eat. What types of foods in general, I know we'll talk more about foods through this program, but what types of foods can you eat more of and still lose weight? Yes. I know I've heard about the um, ideas where you can eat more, but still lose weight. You can yes. eat however much you want and still lose weight. Yes. What do you yes. have to say about types of foods where we might be able to do that during this program? Because in general, you just told us all to eat less. Sure, sure. No, this is great. And actually, um, I'll tell you a funny story. When I was waking, working with one of my patients longitudinally for a while, he was convinced that he could eat, um, eat, he could um, eat vegetables um, and actually gain weight eating vegetables. And and I this is way, and he was trying to tell me, oh, you're deaf, I'm gonna be able to lose weight just eating vegetables. And he wasn't talking about putting dressings. I was like, okay, you go ahead. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna count your calories. I want you to eat as many vegetables and we're gonna count your calories. He ate and he ate and he was, I mean, ready to almost vomit. He was just eating and he hadn't even reached 400 calories. I mean, we, I mean, he was just eating and eating and eating and he had not even reached close to 400 calories even by that time. And this was just by, I mean, really trying to stuff his, his food out. So um, the, uh, foods that are high in fiber um, that are what we call nutrient dense, but not calorie dense. A lot of these are your plant foods, vegetables, whole grains, legumes like beans, et cetera, um, fruits, it, when they're eaten whole, these are things that are that are nutrient dense, but they're not calorie dense. And um, what we'll find is that, um, I'm telling you, I, I, adding something as simple as eating that salad right before you um, eat your meal, there are different ways to be able to eat your salad, Different, so many different varieties of vegetables out there, right? Um, you can eat your salad in a wrap. You can eat your salad in a sandwich. You can eat your salad in a bowl. You can eat your salad with beans. You can eat your salad in a soup. I mean, there are so many different ways to eat your salad, eat those fresh fruits um, and vegetables. The other thing is this. Um, one of the principles that I encourage people to do is to, um, is, is that when you eat your food, you can actually eat more, eat food and feel, um, and have good satiety, um, without filling up on calories, if you do one simple principle, and that's eat your food, don't drink your food. The very interesting thing is that there are very good studies out there, and again, I'll post this on Facebook tomorrow, that show that if you will chew your food, you are actually able to feel fuller with less food and not have to eat for quite a while. You have to actually have that space in between. So that's where those high fiber foods come in. Try some beans if you haven't done them before. So many different ways, so many different ways to do it. And you get, you don't get a ton of calories when you're doing that. Say you sub out, I think you were talking about foods to avoid. Say you sub out a, a um, dressing or butter on your, on your potato, put some, you know, chili beans on there or put some, um, put some vegetables, broccoli, seasoned broccoli on there. Um, you will not, when you're getting these high fiber foods, plant foods, high fiber foods, add eating more of these, you will actually not, um, you'll find yourself having a hard time actually um, not losing weight. If you, wow. if you can feel so I've just got a picture in my head of one of your patients uh, binge eating zucchini. Yes. And that's a funny picture you just put in my brain. Thank you. No, I mean, I mean, they just kept bringing it out. That was what was so funny. They were, he was like, I'll, I'm just going to keep trying. And he just, he couldn't do it. It was, I, I wish I had had it on video. It would have been wonderful to have had for the rest of the rest of the time. But yeah, you, you All can right. get well, full. Thank you, Dr. Nita. I really appreciate it. I'm 100% sure that we're going to be sharing some recipes and sharing some things that are helpful about specific foods. Of course, tonight with the Best Way Basics, we're not covering that in much detail. But I think all of us are somewhat familiar with what's healthy and what's not. And the basic advice you just gave about chewing your food, I think my grandma told me that once upon a time that you're supposed to chew your food. Very simple advice, and I'm positive that it's going to be helpful. At this time, we're going to transition, and uh, Pastor Chris Anderson is the uh, pastor of the South Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church. And what Nita mentioned is something that we firmly believe, and that is that the only hope any of us have for permanent change for some of the bad habits that we've developed 
uh, is from a spiritual dimension. And um, so again, we're very thankful that, um, that uh, Chris Anderson is able to be here with us and he's going to share every, uh, every Tuesday evening. He will share a brief thought uh, from, that, from that side of things. And I know I've enjoyed it. So at this time, uh, Chris, if you wanna spotlight yourself, well, thank you, Dr. Nelson. I appreciate the introduction, and I'm glad to be with you all this evening. The Best Way program is fantastic. I've been through it now four years in a row and really try to incorporate these principles in my life. You know, there's an interesting thing about human beings is that we are more than just a body. Any of you that have been through depression or a difficult time realize this, that you have emotions. You have emotions, and you need emotional health. Now, when you aren't feeling good about your physical body and you're, you're not getting the exercise you need, it affects your emotions. You begin to feel depressed or not happy about yourself and um, your physical health has a direct impact on your emotional health. But there's another part of you that we firmly believe here in this program uh, is important to have healthy and that is spiritual health. Spiritual health, health is another dimension of humanity. It's interesting the Bible actually talks about this. I have here in my Bible, 3 John chap uh, chapter 1 and verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. The Apostle John recognized that your uh, physical health was impacted by your spiritual health. I'd like to look at a little brief story with you in the Old Testament, and this is in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. The story is tell, told about a, um, an incredible warrior. In fact, he was n known for, uh, renowned for his, uh, his valor in battle. He was elevated to the top position in the army in Syria. He was the general of the entire army in, Sy in Syria. And we don't know exactly when, but at some point, he began to feel differently. With this particular disease that he had acquired, it might take one year, it may take five years, it might take 20 years before it would show up. And this disease is called Hansen's disease or leprosy. It, he would have noticed at some point some pink or pale splotches on his skin that were not very sensitive to touch or temperature. This would have moved around his body, his fingers, and the tips of his toes man, might have begun to feel less sensation as well. And uh, gradually, this disease would eventually uh, take his life. There was no known cure for it. Now, leprosy is not as contagious as many think. It was often passed along in close communication. It seems through recent study that this disease is a respiratory disease. And so quite often a person's nose would be running. And my guess is that this man, uh, Captain Naaman, his nose would have been running at some point. He would have gotten this from someone that he would have been intimately contact, connected with. And it would have taken some time, like I said, a year or five years or 20 years before it began to manifest itself in his life. And this was a sure death sentence. Now, he was loved of his king, um, and his king was not very happy about this either. It was a very sad situation, and of course, the king and others were isolating themselves from, uh, from Naaman. Well, Naaman had been in charge of uh, groups of marauders that had gone into the kingdom of Israel and had captured people from there and taken them back to Syria and were using them as slaves. In fact, Naaman himself was a slave owner, as sad as that is, and he had captured a little Israelite, a little Hebrew girl, we don't know her name. She's referred to in the Bible as a little maid. So some young girl was there. And she found out that this, uh, her slave owner had leprosy. Now her heart was touched and she communicated to him somehow that she knew how he could get cured. She said that if Naaman was able to go to Israel, there was a prophet there who could provide healing for him. Now you ask yourself, why would a little slave girl care enough to tell her slave owner about some way that could provide healing. Well, obviously she had experienced the forgiveness that only God can truly give. Uh, she had every right to be bitter and hatred and I hate this man. And yet the power of God in her life demonstrated that she had experienced true forgiveness for him and had compassion on him and shared this with him. Good news. Now, some of you also may be wondering why, why is a church giving a health program? Well, um, because they may seem incompatible, but actually they're fairly related here because Jesus spent his life mostly providing physical healing for uh, others. We want to follow Jesus' example as a church and provide physical healing um, that God has taught us in his word to others. We find biblical principles there that 
are simple but profound and it can radically change your life. And so like Little Maid, we care about others and have compassion on them. And like Jesus, we want to be his hands and feet to help others. And hopefully you'll receive a blessing as you go through this Best Way program. Now, the story continues. Uh, Naaman went and he believed the little girl, the little maid, and he went and told his king that he heard of this possibility of healing in Israel. So the king was pleased. He wrote a letter to give to Naaman to take to the king of Israel, and he did. And, and Naaman himself took a fair amount of wealth with him to give to the king of Israel, the prophet, or whoever for his healing. He took 750 pounds of silver. He took 150 pounds of gold, and he took 10 changes of raiment, very costly, nice outfits to give um, as a token of gratitude and appreciation and, yes, kind of a payment for his healing. He was willing to spend a lot on his healing and his health. And interestingly, we find out in the story that the healing that he was going to find was fairly simple and the cost was quite minimal. It only had to do with faithfulness. But we'll continue in the story. So Naaman travels to Syria. He arrives to see the king. The king was not expecting him and was shocked and was quite upset. He thought maybe the king of Syria was trying to provoke something with him because he had no way to cure leprosy. It's funny that a little girl out of the kingdom of Israel knew about the power of God and a leader, the king of Israel, was shocked and had no idea about how God could cure le leprosy. Just because someone is in a leadership position or has some a position of power, maybe even in the medical field, they might not always understand that God has the true source of power to heal. In fact, that's a pretty strong component in, in Best Way here. We have scientific principles that we're sharing with you. We have some realistic, practical things that you can do in your everyday life. And we have some uh, very powerful scriptures that we believe that if you apply these in, our, in your life and you seek the help that God can give, that you will find a difference in your life. So, the king was upset. While word reached Elisha the prophet that this man was here to experience healing, he sent a message and said, please have Naaman come see me and I can help him out. So Naaman traveled to see Elisha. He arrived at his door with his entourage, his servants that were with him, with this wealth and these clothings to give in behalf of this, thinking that Elisha would come out and speak to him, that Elisha would speak in some voice and provide healing for him. He had certain expectations in his mind about what Elisha would do to provide him healing. You know, we often have expectations as well. Uh, we have expectations, if God is real, then he's going to heal me in this way. We tell him how it's supposed to happen. But rather than humbly coming before God, the one that created us, and seeking to know the way that he has designed us and the way that he has provided for our healing, um, we kind of come at it with, with fists up. Uh, I would recommend an approach that's humble. Lord, what is it you would have me to do to be, to be healed? Well, Elisha sent a message. He did not come out. He did not come out as Naaman had expected. Elisha sent the message and said, go to the River Jordan, dip seven times, and you will be healed. That's it. It was simple. It was not complex. It was not a complex strategy. And in fact, it required zero, zero of Naaman's money to do this. Elisha would not even take payment for this. Well, Naaman was upset. He was angry. The Bible says he left angry in a heat, in a storm, off on his horses. Well, at some point, after he maybe cooled down a little bit, his servants rode up beside him and they said, uh, Good master, if Elisha had asked you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done that? But since he asked you to do something simple, why not give it a try? Well, their words seemed reasonable to me. It was simple. Why not? Just give it a shot and see. Naaman was upset because he felt that the rivers of his country were much more clean and much better than this. He wanted his own way. Well, the only way for him to provide the healing that was indicated by God through his prophet was for him to follow the instructions that God had given through his prophet. So Naaman recognized that he should at least give it a try. So Naaman went to the River Jordan and he dipped not one time. He went under the water not two times, not three times, not five times, not six times. It wasn't until he fully, completely followed the directions God had given that he experienced the healing that God had indicated for his life. The leprosy was gone. 
He went back and expressed gratitude to Elisha and went back to his country, a healed man. Now, if God's Word provides clear directions on our health that are simple, that are not costly, and are not complex, and that are easy to follow, if He is the one that created us and He has a solution for our health, then don't you think it'd be worth giving it a try? I'd like to encourage you as you go through the Best Way program that you just give these principles a try. Don't just take the scientific stuff and do it. Don't just take the group stuff or ignore the group time that we have together. And don't ignore the spiritual part. This is a complete program that is simple, not complex. And we would encourage you, just give it a try and see if there is something in store for you. And you might experience the healing that Naaman did and be blessed indeed. God bless you as you go through this journey in best way. Well, that's it as far as the, this part of our presentation. We at this time broke apart into small groups and had our small group meetings. I'm sorry that those of you that are watching this now weren't able to participate in those, but hopefully on night two and night three and et cetera, you'll be able to join us. It's a really important part of this program and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Now, there are some pieces that would be helpful for you, for you to know if you went through the small group discussion. One of those is that the workbook is in a digital PDF format. It's best if you can print that off and go through it yourself. Now, the scorecard that's shown there is what we used to have when we met in person was a physical piece of paper that you would use to record uh, your data on. We don't have that uh, because we're meeting online. So you'll need to ignore that. There is a link on our website on southbaysd.org and you'll go to the Best Way tab and you'll scroll down and you'll see the online scorecard. You'll select that and you'll enter that scorecard each day. And I'd recommend that after your breakfast that you enter your score there and then hit, go scroll to the bottom and hit submit. After your lunch, enter your information there, scroll to the bottom, hit submit, and then the same again for supper. And if you do any snacks throughout the day, enter those in and how those went um, and hit submit. Now your weight, you're gonna measure, you're gonna weigh that just once a week. You're gonna, met, you're gonna enter your weight right now, hit submit, and then on Monday, before the meeting next week, you need to weigh yourself again. And it's best if you use the same scales every week because some scales are a little bit different and weigh yourself every week and record that in this, in this app as well. So that's it for now. We hope you can join us live next Tuesday night at 7 p.m.